Well, he's back. One of our favorite guests here on Coast to Coast, David Sarita. He's got a whole bunch of things to talk with you about, and he's next on Coast to Coast AM. David Sarita. He's been an ecologist, spiritual explorer, space scientist for decades. His new ebook, Differentials and Hidden Harmonic Codes of the Universe, Making Waves with Multiple PhDs, and, well, he turns the pages on many subjects such as sacred geometry, zero-point energy, hidden harmonic codes of the universe, the answer to anti-gravity, and how to make extraterrestrial communication possible. In his laboratory, David Sarita is conducting actual experiments on zero-point energy, merging ancient stone technology with modern science. Here he is, full program on Coast to Coast. David, welcome back, my friend. How are you? Good, George. Good to hear your voice. I think last time you were with me, Christmas Eve, wasn't it? Um, right yeah, I that. think so. Yeah, it's been it's been a little while. Always a magical time of the year, isn't it, David? Yeah, really it really like that is. Time. It's hard to believe, too. We're rolling through March into April in a few more weeks. Where is the time going, David? I know. It, I, I almost I actually said to my wife the other day, can we just slow March down? Can, it just seems like it's all happening so fast, and, and time is so precious. I'm yeah. going back to St. Louis Sunday for a little bit to see my kids and do the programs out of the cave there. Oh, that's and, great. And, you know, my friends start calling me here when they know I'm on my way back. And uh, I've got a dear friend of mine who's almost like a second mother. She's 74 years old. And, you know, I, I've been telling her, hey, I'm on the way back. And every Sunday I'll take her to brunch at a certain place that we go to in St. Louis. And she's just been a wonderful person. And she said, do you know you've known me for 10 years, you know, because she was my wife's friend. And, you know, and after we split up, you know, we stayed friends. And when she said that, it it almost as if I got hit by a brick. 10 years in an event in one's life, and it seems like yesterday. And that's what's so scary, David. Time just keeps ticking by. Well, you know, one thing I think about in terms of death and dying is this voice, this moment, the qualities of the, of, of being human. It's like a flower. It's only going to happen once exactly with all of those qualities. And when, it, and when we die, I mean, I, I'm fully convinced that we go on. I've seen the evidence. But this particular moment and this moment on Earth on this planet is never going to happen again. And that just baffles me. You know, to no end. You know, and that's why, because it is so quick that you need to live every day as if it's your last. And you really need to have fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, you know, I feel kind of the same way about my research because I know I'm 47 years old and most of the great scientists in history and even explorers in many different fields, they kind of peaked in their 40s in their in their capacity, and then they just kind of maintain, you know, most of their major discoveries from that point on. So I'm really in a very active stage of research. And you have fun doing what you do, don't you? Oh, I love it. Like, I wake up in the middle of the night. In fact, you know, this thing has happened recently about, you know, my discovery on differentials has been evolving for years, and I finally believe that I've I've, I've done so much homework, and I presented my my ebook to so many multiple PhDs, and it's creating so many waves out there of excitement. It's so much fun for me because I'm seeing the uh, the process of discovery and shared presence, and also with other researchers of mine. And we see that every time we turn another page, I mean, huge epiphanies and new discoveries occur. And I feel like you know consciousness is accelerating so much. And thanks to you know radio shows like yours and communicating with the world, ideas are accelerating so quickly that if we don't destroy ourselves, we literally could become an interstellar civilization. I think so, too. Tell me about the lab. Well, firstly, you know, um, in the lab itself, I mean, I had I had done something that, that even my partners had no idea what I was up to, but I knew about the hidden harmonic codes of the universe, and I remember... One of my favorite experiments of Nikola Tesla's was that he tuned into a particular harmonic in the Earth itself, and he had his lab set up in, in Colorado Springs, and he was tied into the entire grid of the entire state of Colorado. And he said that in this particular harmonic, he actually tapped into a wave of energy that when it, when it harmonized and came flooding into his lab and into the, into the state, he shorted out 
all of the transformers in the entire state of Colorado, and he was actually kicked out of the state of Colorado. So with that, I knew that these codes existed. I knew these harmonics existed, and I found out mathematically where they are, George. I mean, virtually everywhere. Something, if we think of the evolution of the way electricity has evolved, we went from just creating huge bursts or amplitude of electricity, and then we went to frequencies of energy thanks to the Tesla coil, and that led to the birth of radio and, and cell phones and, and television broadcasting on particular frequencies. But what I've discovered, the way the universe is really working, is there's something beyond a frequency concept, and there, there are actual precise harmonic codes which are multiple frequencies working in tandem together, kind of like a symphony, in precise dimensions of energy and ratios that produce a, something that is utterly miraculous. And it can lead to anything from anti-gravity to infinite energy, like what happened in Nikola Tesla, mm -hmm. um, and in fact will revolutionize our understanding of music and communicating it he over huge distances in the universe. And I've actually found out how to build a small harmonic set of wave generators that I mathematically calculated. And what I was doing was actually charging a, a concept of merging ancient technology with modern technology, and essentially it's stone technology. And we'll actually see how this ties into the Great Pyramids. And I know about your recent show on the History Channel. I haven't seen it yet because I don't have television, but I know this is going to be very, very exciting for, for your viewers. But essentially stones, what I discovered was that they serve an actual purpose in, in, in essence in technology. They, certain stones have what's called capacitance, meaning they have the capacity to hold an electrical charge. And that is because certain stones have a quality of crystalline structure, but also casimiri kind of metal plates in them, little flakelets of metal. And, and you know what? I would not have believed it. I talked to Shelley Carr some time ago, and she's going to be on tomorrow night, ironically enough, talking about stones, David. You're absolutely right. Stones, what you think are, you know, just sitting there, inanimate objects, they have the ability to uh, to do just about all kinds of things with sound, harmonics, y you name it. Well, because of these little micro plates of metal, and, and, you know, John Hutchison was very instrumental in educating me about this process, I found that, you know, firstly, I did measurements on the electricity of the human body just using a, a simple voltage meter in the millivolt setting on our fingertips, thumb and index finger. You can see, you know, I've tested hundreds and hundreds of people at the, um, the um, Laughlin UFO Congress, and you see people that have like MS or nervous system disorders or depression or any kind of challenging uh, illness. They have very low current in their body. Not even, some of them are not even one one hundredth of a, of a volt. Not even that. And then people who are very healthy can have, be as much as a third of a volt or 30 um, a hundredths of a volt. And so what I did is I realized that, you know, certain types of stone, and we really lost touch with this from wearing rubber shoes and disconnecting with the earth, but when you touch them, because they have a little bit of charge from, from actual electromagnetism and capturing that electromagnetism from the sun, it raises our current a little, just a little bit. So I found a way to program stones, little stone pendants, with harmonic code generators and actually get the, the code to stay there in Amazing. the stone. Amazing and, work, David. And I, What's that? Amazing work. It's amazing. And when people touch them just for two minutes and then let them go, a person, for example, with, uh, with MS who had 0 0.7 of one hundredths of a volt went to five full millivolts, which is phenomenal. And they're not even plugged into the thing anymore. And we did this hundreds and hundreds of times. So the question is, you know, this is just a small-scale experiment because I'm going to tell you something really, really outrageous. But essentially, it was like, where is all this extra energy coming from? You know, why is the human body, when it touches these qu what I call quantum uh, jewelry pendants, why is the body you know, moving more electrical conductivity and the energy flow is getting better? And I'm not electrocuting people. I mean, the, the energy levels are very, very safe. <laughs> and I trust you. Super athletes try to get up to 200 millivolts, so I, I haven't had anybody get that high except for my wife, actually. Um, so... I was really interested in, in, you know, how just by programming a harmonic code in a stone, this could be happening. Well, I started taking measurements with electromagnetic field meters 
and I invented a new type of Tesla coil that, that has never been invented before. And I have three gen-